Hey, what's up? Chris Crone here. And today I want to share with you why you should buy a home in your 20s. Dude, the reality is there's a lot of young people that would prefer to rent. They don't understand this whole, why should I own something? And I want to tell you right now that by the time I was 26 years old, I owned 25 homes. I was worth $1.6 million. More importantly, those homes were paying $12,000 a month to me, which meant that I could pretty much have any lifestyle I wanted, didn't have to have a job anymore. Why do you want to slave your entire life and then be 65 years old with not enough money for retirement? With this one shot you got at living life on your terms the way you want, why not become a genius at making it? All right, we're almost to my office. I'm actually gonna be picking up the CEO of my company, the guy that runs it all. Hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> hey, check it out. Dude, what's up? Dude, I know it's a crazy day. I know you got a million things going on. Uh, but uh, dude, we're gonna take a break, hop on in, and uh, I'm gonna show oh, you man. how all of this real estate came about. Dude, what's up, man? Hop in. Dude, are these up for grabs? Yeah, 100%, man. Fill up. You live on another planet, I swear. Well, dude, listen, you have gotten in the game of real estate. Yes. The last couple of years, yes. you went from owning nothing to now your own house, you've got three rentals, yes. and uh, you don't have 25 homes yet, No, but you're on your way. It's one of my goals. For those that don't really know who Carson is, by the way, here on my YouTube channel, so Carson runs, dude, how many companies? Like dozen? Like like every four or five months, well, it's a brand new project. Right, because you come up with a new product and a new company and a new venture. So when I was in college, we had just gone through the Great Recession. Yeah. And I remember my brother-in-law talked to me and he's like, dude, you should buy a house right now. Home prices are really, really good. I was like, I don't wanna be tied here. Like I knew I was gonna go on to grad school yep. and I ended up going to school in California. And so I was like, I don't wanna be tied here to a home. Dude, so that's I didn't the, buy in my 20s. Th that is the first mistake that most people make is they actually How? think that buying a home means something for you. And when I bought my first house, so I was 23 years old and I knew that I might even be living in it for a short period of time but this is all about making money because society has a really crappy game plan that'll never take care of me and my family. So it's up to me, the onus is on me to take care of, dude, the things that I want in life. I'm not gonna rely on a boss, a career, a degree, or any of that. Dude, let me tell you about this first house that we're coming up on. Okay. So this house right around the corner here was my very first purchase. And I think it will answer your question. Guys, for me, buying this house was not about becoming rich. It was not about making a million dollars. It was really about the fact that I had some problems in my life. First of all, my biggest expense outside of college was my tiny little apartment that cost $400 a month. And this little house that I'm about to show you, I rented out its basement and it paid the entire house payment. So for me, buying that house, it's actually right there. That house right there, Jeez. I literally got to live in it for free. For that would fit in my living room Did you right guys now. have kids at this point? No kids. No. So it's just you and Kalen. It was just me and my oh, wife. Oh, that's, it's cute. All right, dude, check it out. This is it. This little guy right here, kid you not, I was basically living for free in this house. My wife and I had the three bedroom all to ourselves upstairs. Uh -huh. We rented out the basement and the 550 it brought in a month covered the mortgage. Um, so right there, that was the basement. Oh, that little thing right there leads to a one bedroom, one bath moneymaker that paid for the whole house. Right here in the yard, there was this for sale by owner sign and I saw it and immediately my heart leapt and said, that's the house. And so I pulled my car around, you, you turn right here, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, but my feet are taking me to the front of the house. <laughs> and I kid you not, I walk up, I knock on the front of the door, and because it's for sale by owner, I don't yeah. have a realtor, she doesn't have a realtor. So it's this whatever you can negotiate. Older, grumpy woman came to the door, and I had no idea what I was doing, dude. My mentor was not with me, he was not in my back pocket. And I get up to the front of the door and I knock on it, she opens up, she says, what do you want? I said, <laughs> what did you say? I said, I'd like to buy your house for $100,000. You, you led with the offer. I, I led you, with, like the first I didn't thing even out say, of your mouth hey, how many, how, how many bedrooms are in here? And she looked at me and she just totally, she was so grumpy. She's like, no. And I'm like, uh, what do I do? Can I, can, can I see the house? She's like, That's, sure. Do you realize this sets a precedent for you of buying or making offers on houses sight unseen? Because how often do you buy a house now Every day. that you haven't 
I haven't been inside, haven't every looked day. at. Every day. So this is number one. Yep. And I'm assuming it set you up really nicely for house number two. This house bought house number two. We're gonna go check it out right now. When we bought the house, my wife was like, I'm not living in that house unless you like increase the standards. Cause they left the fridge and they left a present. They unplugged the fridge a month earlier and they didn't clean it out. The within, like we opened it for the first time, like a quarter inch, purple sludge is oozing all over the ground and a smell, we had started retching. So my wife looked at me and we were so poor. I'm like, we have to salvage this. We literally got gloves up to here, masks, all like hazmat suits. And we cleaned out that entire oh fridge. Gosh. And after it was all cleaned, it was so unusable. There was no way, no amount of bleach was gonna fix that thing. So we literally hauled it onto the corner, said, take me for free. Don't make the same mistake I made, please. Don't buy things that have to be fixed up. That's what I learned, I'm learned. Really? You can find a great deal that is like, needs all this fix up and you can find good deals that don't need any. At this point, you're looking at buying your second home. At what point did it become this thing where you're like, I'm gonna buy lots of homes? Um, it was actually that second home we knew was actually gonna be way more homes um, because my wife now equated a home to more residual income. It's like every home is like three, four, five, six hundred leftover dollars every month that she can spend on paying things down, getting ahead. And um, we actually, I'll never forget, we were sitting in the living room and we started dreaming. And it was like, oh my gosh, how many homes would we need to, for you, Chris, to quit your job or for us to like mm -hmm. travel the world? And we were so poor that the biggest number we could reach for at that time was 10 grand a month. Like the uh -huh. idea of $10,000 a month automatically coming in was like, that was Taj Mahal huge for, for our little, our well, little undeveloped minds at the time. Let's be honest. I, I've been in that phase too where 10,000 a month seemed unattainable and that all my dreams would be open with just 10K a month. Yeah, but my wife and I decided when we buy 20 homes, okay. I can quit my job. That's all I needed from my wife was that permission. I'm like, game on, let's go. And it only took a total of four and a half years total to get to 25 Jeez. homes. It got to $12,000 a month and I'll never forget the amazing feeling of literally parking my car outside my boss's office, walking up the stairs, making a beeline for him, not saying hi to any of my friends. I was nervous and excited. I sat down, I said, Aaron, I'm done. And uh, when I walked out that day from quitting, I felt like I was honestly, I, I can only describe it as like breathing new oxygen, like freedom oxygen, like I had never breathed before. Because at that point, I started traveling the world. I could drive any car I wanted. I could I could pretty much have within reason whatever I wanted because when I quit my job, dude, I didn't just stop at 25 homes. Then it became 50 homes. Then it became hundreds of homes. And literally, anytime I wanted to give more to charity or I wanted more lifestyle or I wanted more options, it literally just meant buy more houses. Why do you want to slave your entire life and then be 65 years old with not enough money for retirement, and that will have been your life. Don't you think that you'll get to a moment where you look back and say, did I really screw it up? Did I take the wrong path? And I'm convinced that most people do not think this question until it's too late. They should be asking that in their 20s. This is what I call a cash cow. Okay. Because when I bought it, it needed almost no fix up whatsoever. It was basic cosmetics. And in a short period of time, I put a family in here doing what I call a rent to own. So they weren't just gonna rent it. Um, my mortgage, like I said, was about a thousand a month. They're paying 1600, so. So cash flowing 600 a month. $600 a month, by the way, when you're poor college oh kid, my gosh, that... you are gonna get ahead really so fast. fast. So this house though was kind of scary because we weren't gonna live in it. And I'm like, can I really like only check in once in a while and everything works out? Oh, gotcha. And dude, within a year, so I'm like, I would you... never drop by, I would never visit. How did you get a second? How'd okay. you convince the bank to okay. give me more so, money? So I, I want to be clear. It was not hard to qualify for my first house. If you have a job for two years, if you have basic credit, you can actually qualify relatively easy. And on a home that you live in, you're often putting like 3% down payment. Right, the bank's super chill. They're like, oh cute, so new family, we're gonna help you get in your little house. Remember on $110,000, 3% was like 3,300 bucks. Right. That's what I came out of pocket to make that thing happen. But did I have the money to buy this? Of course I didn't. I was a poor college kid. But my house did. Because I bought it with equity, a year later, 12 months after I bought that first house, I was able to actually go back to the bank and say, hey, 
can I have some of that equity? And they set Did up you? a home equity line of credit. Okay, so a HELOC. 19 grand basically. And that was enough to be a down payment on this. Okay. So basically the first house, that's bought why you have to second. buy it right. It bought the second house. That first house was starting to feel kind of like, wow, we could have bought something nice or we're breathing yeah, more easily. You're, again, you're on a different path so than my, most people would take. So, so my third house was actually a new house for us to move into. Uh -huh. And that first one would actually become a rental. We would make over $500 a month on that. We would make over $600 a month on this. And the third house we bought, guess what it also had? A basement, a basement apartment, apartment that paid everything. Flowing. So we're living for free now with $1,000 a month. Uh -huh. Let's check out that house. You know, I do not know what it is about a limousine that everyone thinks is like, ah, oh, something so special is happening. I'm like, yeah, I'm not driving. I can talk and chat. I can yes. do a meeting. I can look at my phone. So we're on our, on our way to house number three. Yep. Okay. How did you finance this one? Okay. So this is actually a house again that um, my wife and I were going to move into. So this okay. is going to be our second so house that we bought. Primary. Uh -huh. But guess how we bought it? We used the equity from house number two. Another HELOC. I used another HELOC and I basically had that buy the next house. And um, this house that we're about to visit, it has again, a basement apartment, um, a big one. Like this was a nicer, newer house. Like this uh -huh. house at the time was only a few years old. So my wife was really happy about that, right? This is a nice house. I'm seeing a standard, sort of a, a cookie cutter box that you stuck with. Yes. Okay, and for our friends at home, like a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, uh, we don't recommend people using a credit card to buy a house. No. What's the difference with the line of credit? You know, basically a, a bank will say, man, you actually bought this house and it, you owe this, but it's worth that. And they look at that difference and it's called equity. And the bank will say, well, we'll actually make some of that equity available to you and you can do whatever you want with it. You can even use it like a credit card, but it has super low rates and um, you only pay for it if you use it. So when I say that I used equity from that second house to buy this third one, that, that first of all, that house could cover that payment because it had this cash flow. Mm -hmm. But the new house I bought was also producing cash flow. So it was this game where every house produced more cash flow and then I'd borrow a little bit to buy the next house, uh, but the new house would also be able to pay that. So my cash flow was getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. And my assets, like my net worth was climbing. Right. You know, by the time I bought this third house, my net worth was now over $200,000. And I'm like, that's a fifth of a way to a million dollars. And so I was like, I could like taste it. I could see right, the light at the end your... of the, I, I was like, this is working. Every house matters. Okay, man. So. This is the house. This and is the this, one. This is a cute little neighborhood. Like it's actually nice. It's a little bit more upscale. It's it's a little over the median. And um, honestly, I felt like a boss when I could like buy this yeah. house for my family because my wife, we had our, our first baby at the time. And so, you know, we rented the upstairs, three bedrooms, all for us, two baths. The downstairs, separate apartment again, mm -hmm. brought in seventeen hundred dollars a month. And I lived in this house for free. I rented out my first one. I rented out that other one I just took you to. So basically we were making over a thousand dollars a month and living for free. And then I bought houses four, five, six, 10, 15, 20. And we kept on going until after this, we eventually moved into like my custom built 10,000 square foot house, uh, which at the time was like our total dream house. Dream house. Yeah. I gotta be honest. When I look at this, the first thing I think of is this is most people's starter home. Yeah. But it was your third. So well, you're already on a trajectory that most people don't do. They wouldn't be willing to live in that dinky little apartment know, in Provo. I know. They don't want to delay gratification. Yeah. I think in four and a half years, I made that first one in $1.6 million. And that, who cares what I was worth? I was a millionaire, but more importantly was, I have a six-figure residual income, which mm -hmm. means if I don't want to work, I don't have to. And so it was about freedom. But at this point, something really magical happened. I had, because I had three houses, I actually had acquired something that I call a track record. And my father-in-law, who would eventually become my first real estate partner, I remember he was so confused at this young, newly married, just married his daughter, 20 whatever year old, buying a first house. And I remember him like scratching his head like, that doesn't make sense. You just You're not even through college. No, yet. no, you don't know what you even want to be in college. I found out I wasn't going to be a doctor and then I go buy a house. He's like, what is wrong with you? And then when I bought my second house, he was perplexed. When I bought this house, he just couldn't understand, like, why was I buying houses? He didn't understand that the biggest need in all of America, the, the most expensive commodity that most people will buy is a home. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you are going to sell something or buy something or invest in something, 
the most expensive commodity will make you the most money for the same amount of time as, as doing something small and piddly. But Chris, what if you default on the loans? What if you can't Dude, make that's your the risk? Dude, that's the risk. Of course, everyone's worried. Like, uh -huh. what and that's if? where people's mind go when and, they and, start and, hearing you have three homes. And, and, what, and you have to actually ask yourself this really important question. Do you want fear of risk and fear of failure to really like be the king that sits at the head of the table in your mind? Because it is for most people. And I just said, you know what? I would rather risk it all and I'd rather lose it all and have a chance, even if it's a small one, at living like this tremendous great life. And I look at like where I'm at today and I'm like, dude, I've traveled the world. I've seen and done most things that most people will never do. My bucket list has so many check marks on it. And so for me, the risk was worth it. I just didn't want a boring, mundane, lame, safe, risk-free life. Because that's the biggest risk of all. Taking no risk is how you guarantee to fail and lose. So we're on our way to your dream home. Yeah, my first one. Your mansion. What what was it like? I mean, you have arrived at this point and you could design it and have it be anything you wanted. You know, it was it was such an amazing feeling to go to the bank and I was like, oh, you're pre-approved to build this multi-million dollar house. And I got with the architect and I started designing it. And I don't know why, my wife and I, I told her, I said, I don't want to buy a house. I want to design it. And, um, you know, I wanted it to have a theater room, a, but a really big theater room. And I wanted to have a, a billiards room and a game room and a, and a really beautiful separate office, you know, beautiful landscaping. I wanted, I, I wanted to design it for everything. This is where you lived when I came into the picture. Yeah, so we lived there for 11 years. Uh, and that house did not have a basement that we rented out. Didn't need it at this didn't, point. Didn't need it. At this point, it was like, are you kidding? Everything is covered. Everything's paid for. It was really just about enjoying a really great life. We positioned it. I got it right outside of the canyon on a golf course, right outside of the Sundance Film Festival. I could I could go up there and snowboard. like. I went ran, running so, in the canyon. It was like perfect for me. So this wasn't necessarily an investment. This was finally reaping the benefits nope. of all the investing nope. that you had done. Nope. It's always an investment. Okay, how even so? If, even if you're going to live in it. If you ever buy an asset, you should always be buying it strategically. When I built that house, I found a way to build it $500,000 less than really? its appraisal. Mm -hmm. Without cutting corners. And by the way, I put Venetian plaster on the walls. This uh -huh. stuff's like, like six dollars a foot to put on, right? Right. But I, again, I crunched all my numbers and I said, when I do this deal, I want my net worth to shoot up. So that was always the intention. That's exactly what we did. So you built it with equity in mind. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the good life. Uh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Dude, this house. It's crazy. Well, and you know, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, look at this big mansion. But reality is, all it was was memories, right? That's what really money is. It just means more options. It means more opportunities. I'm passionate about helping people make money and build assets and build active incomes because at the end of the day, if you have more options, there's more opportunities for creating meaning, meaningful memories, and the things that really matter. I got to ask what I think is on a lot of viewers' minds when they see this. They see your mansion. And that is, dude, did... Did you just get lucky? Were you just in the right place at the right time? I got lucky. Hey. But I believe you can too. I mean, honestly, I believe that luck is something that we make. Some people literally just have bad things happen to them in life. And I cheer all the harder when someone says, I rose above and I figured out how to get out of that mess. I mean, if anything, what did I start with? I started with a pile of debt. Everyone told me I was too young. Everyone told me I was too stupid. That's what I had going for me. But you know what, the real formula that made this happen, like if I were to like break it down really simple for you, is I had a mentor. And that mentor taught me and filled in the gap from what I didn't know. And that gave me confidence and a blueprint. And then what I did is I, I acted on the information. And frankly, that's what I do in my life. That's what this channel is about. It's about giving you mentorship. It's about passing that information on to people. I give all of my books away for free. Frankly, to actually help people figure out how to have more options and live a better life. You, you said something a bit ago that struck me as interesting. You said this was the start of the wealth. Yeah. So, I mean, you had this vision, 25 homes, $10,000 a month. Did you reach it? Dude, are you kidding me, man? Dude, $10,000 a month in today's society is like, hey, I get to take one or two trips a year and I can mm -hmm. live in a slightly above average house and I can drive newer cars, but otherwise you're still in struggle. Like this house represented moving into enough abundance where I said, wait, 10 grand a month? 
Why not 20? Why not 30? Why not 50? Why not 100? And I realized that I could write my check. I just had to have a system that made all that possible. And it was while in this house that you wrote your first real estate book. I wrote The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth here. I wrote it because I had everybody reaching out basically saying, how are you doing it? And I wanted to give a good answer. And so I found that the best answer was basically saying, here's the exact technical blueprint of how you do this. You know, you followed yep, it. You've absolutely. been buying houses. How's it yep. been working for you? Dude, it's amazing. And actually, if you want to get your copy of the book for free, you're giving it away for free. Yep. Just click this link right here and uh, fill out some information and it's on its way to you. The reality is you have this one opportunity in your life to do something amazing and incredible. You've seen a little bit of insight to like how I built my wealth, but I don't want you to think about just the money or real estate. I want you to understand that with this one shot you got at living life on your terms the way you want, it takes money to do that to some extent, so why not become a genius at making it? And if you don't feel like you're a genius, if you don't feel like you're controlling your financial destiny, then get the book and read it, and then all you have to do is put it into action just like Carson has done, and literally tens and tens of thousands it of works. other people as well. It works, and it's better to start now than later because home prices are always climbing. So, by the way, if you are in your 20s wondering if you should buy a yes. house, the answer is yes, yes, and maybe five or 10 or 50 more. Hey, thank you so much for watching today's video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. By the way, this was a great house for me, but if you wanna see the house I live in right now, click this link and I'll give you a tour and walk through of that one. More importantly, if you're ready to take your financial life to the next level, make sure you get my book for free, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.